Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly what I'm talking about with my frustrations with depth of field preview and Nikon Z cameras, and show you why I really hope that they fix that, not just in future cameras, but in firmware for all the Z cameras. Well, hey there, Hudson here. Welcome to my studio. Uh, fun stuff to talk about today, really addressing some questions that I've gotten from earlier videos and in some earlier office hours sessions that I've done with some of you out in the community. I wanna thank everyone in the community for liking, sharing, subscribing to these videos. It makes a huge difference and I don't take any of you for granted. I really wanna thank everyone who's been subscribing newly and this topic may be completely new to some of you who've signed up in the last couple of years. So um, it's gonna be a fun one. And I think I've figured out a way to show really in a, in a better way than I've done before exactly what I'm talking about with this depth of field preview problem and I'm going to showcase it both with my old D850 which I am about uh, to send off to MPB to, to, to sell just because I'm not using it um, and then I'll show you with the with the new Z7 II we'll kind of go back and forth. Uh, I want to invite anyone uh, to my office hours on June 22nd, Rick, Woody, Darren, David will all be there taking your questions and going through submitted images that you people out in the community give to us for our long exposure uh, gallery. So take your best long exposure shot, one image, run to hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. You can submit that image and submit a question for discussion. We're gonna be talking about long exposure, neutral density filters, some of that kind of fun stuff. Uh, shortly after that, I'm taking off on a trip to New York uh, for, for my brother-in-law's uh, birthday and uh, just to spend a little time in the city, which it's been forever, and I'm really looking forward to it. All right, so I want to talk about depth of field. And just so everybody has a heads up, there's a chaptered out table of contents. You can run through the chapters along the bottom row of this video like all the other latest videos that I've done. And I also have links to everything that I'm talking about, videos that I reference, gear, whatever. Uh, if you click on the video's title or show more, you'll see in the full video description along with a chaptered out table of contents with time codes that you can click on. All right, so, so I got my, my uh, D850 set up here and I'm in live view and I'm actually, I'm gonna record Got kind of a fun way. I'm shooting that out through an Atomus Ninja 5 recorder and back in through, it's long and complicated, but through a, uh, through a, a switcher that's coming in like a webcam to my computer. And I'm able to show you what's on the back screen of my D850 in its live view mode. So you can see I've got my water bottle over here and I've got my Nikon Z7 II. And right now I'm gonna work with the D850. I have probably one of my favorite lenses ever made in the world, one of the F lenses I can't see getting rid of anytime soon, the, the 105 millimeter 1.4. Uh, it has a really shallow depth of field. And there's a technique I used since DSLRs came out with live view that's very similar to how a large format photographer would get under the hood and use a loop on the ground glass to examine really closely magnified whether or not the foreground of their scene is in focus, the background of their scene is in focus, and they could work through tilting and, and through focusing and stopping down to get everything that they wanted out in the landscape in focus. Or if they're working in a macro environment, making sure that all the parts of their macro scene are in focus, or a still life to make sure that what they want is in focus and what they don't want in focus is in focus. A really, really precision method of getting exactly the focus that you're looking for. And you know the ability to zoom in on the live view when live view came out on DSLRs was like cheating to me as a, as a landscape photographer. And, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I got my D850 right here, and, and I'm gonna just show you the, what I'm looking at through it right now. You know, I'm at 1.4, not very much is in focus, maybe the front element of my Nikon 50 1.8S lens that's mounted on the Z7 II. You know, if, if I just wanted to focus on my water bottle, you know, I could, I could go ahead and move my focus point. You can see that little red square out over the Hawaiian Islands here. I've got a Kauai sticker. And I could hit autofocus, boom. Now my bottle is focused and my camera is even more out of focus. Well, one of the neat things with the DSLRs, let's say you wanted to use a little aperture to stop down and, and get a little bit more in focus. As I stop down, you'll see that the live view 
previews what the image is going to look like at my final aperture. So as I stop down here, it continues right through F9, F11. Things are getting sharper and sharper. Now that Nikon symbol is starting to look like it's more in focus. I can run over here and say, hmm, you know, is it really in focus? Zoom in. Well, it's not really, is it? Let's see. At F11, if I move my focus ring a little more towards infinity, can I split the difference that that aperture is getting me, get that Nikon looking a little bit more in focus and still keep my water bottle in focus? Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. You know, it wasn't in focus picking one of them to focus on, but because of the fact that when you're increasing your aperture, your depth of field, your apparent depth of field moves out away from your focus point and moves towards you from the focus point, you're able to kind of move that focus point into the scene to capture everything in apparent focus well enough to get a nice sharp looking print where I have the water bottle and the camera in focus at the same time. You know, stopping down to F11 is pretty good. I can even watch it while I'm zoomed in and see the effects of stopping down to F14. I'm watching my top screen right now, F16, and then zoom back over and see, you know, what does everything look like at F16? Ooh, they're both nice, sharp, and in focus. Now that's something I can't do with autofocus. It, it's literally like using a large format camera and using a loop to look at that ground glass when you're under a dark hood out in the landscape except it's quicker simpler and easier you know if i back back out now i've found my focus point that puts everything out there now the way the dslrs were wired if i hit the depth of field preview button under under my middle finger here in the front of the camera by the grip what happens is it opens the aperture wide up so that it doesn't have to amplify the light signal to get me a nice bright view in the back of the screen. It'll show it at a lower ISO without as much amplification, a cleaner image. It lets me see what it looks like wide open just for com composition or maybe, maybe you know, getting one thing in focus. It's easier to compose with that brighter view. You can see it's getting dimmer as it's stopped down. So, that is something that I used all the time, particularly as a landscape photographer. I get out in a scene with say a 24 or 28 or 35 millimeter lens composition and have some beautiful piece of the foreground that was really important to me to have in focus and the distant mountains. And I could use this technique to figure out what aperture do I need and where do I need to place focus in order to get the foreground sharp and the background sharp at the same time. Macro photographers, still like photographers, landscape photographers, people that are set up meticulously crafting their image on the tripod can use this technique to just nail it every time. It's like cheating, all right? So that was possible with the D850, the D810, the D800, the D700, the D500, the D300S that I had, that, or D300, I don't remember, that had the, the live view was the first kind of really good live view camera that I had. All right, so I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna switch these two cameras around and show you the problem with all of the Z cameras to date with doing this. All right, and, and perhaps I should preface this. You know, I did tell you I'm, I'm selling my 850. I am 100%, I love working with the Z cameras. This is this one thing that just seems frustrating. There, there's, there's workarounds. I'll show you how I tend to work around it when I'm out in the field, but it's just plain, seems completely nonsensical that you can't do the same thing. So I've swapped the 850 out with the Z7 II. All right, my, my favorite camera that I work with these days, I'm filming with the Z6 II, which I also adore. I've got my live view up. I could easy, easily do this through the viewfinder as the live view. That's one thing that I love. I wouldn't need to throw my reading glasses on if I'm not filming this. I'd be just looking through my eye finder through the diopter adjustment. I wouldn't need reading glasses, but just one of the many little things. You know, here's another. I can just tap the screen and put the focus point wherever I want without focusing or shooting. The, 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 the D850, you either shoot or it focuses or it's turned off. This, you can just locate the point, which is really nice. So I'm gonna do just what we did before with the 850. I'm gonna put it on that little section of the Hawaii, Hawaiian Islands there. Um, I can move it around a little bit, make sure it's on a contrast point, hit the autofocus on button, my back button. Boom, I'm locked in, I'm focused. Same lens, same position. We just swapped the 850 and the, and the, the Z7 II. I'm using the FTZ adapter here. All right, 
Now, you know, obviously that Nikon's nowhere near in focus. Let's stop down a little bit. You can see it changing just like you did with the 850, except when you hit f5.6, suddenly it stops stopping down. You get no effect in the viewfinder unless you hit the depth of field preview. If I push the depth of field preview, which I have remapped to the movie button in still mode, then all of a sudden, you know, you get kind of a noisy look at, at what this is going to look like. It's using some, um, some ISO, you know, ramping the ISO to give you a look at whether or not things look sharp to you. You know, if you want to zoom in and say, hmm, is the Nikon symbol actually in focus? Well, I could tap, put my cursor there. I have a button, the center of my D-pad is mapped to zoom in to wherever the focus point is to 100%, just with a tap. Well, you know, another great thing with a Z camera, hmm, you know, it's, it's only showing it to me at f5.6, despite the fact that I've dialed it to f11. If I try to hit depth of field preview, it bumps me right back out to fit view. There is no physically possible way in still mode with the Z cameras to preview what your final aperture is going to look like zoomed in while you're in live view, whether you're looking through the viewfinder or whether you're looking at the back display. Now, let, let's just switch it up for a second and go to video. You're not going to see all the exposure information in video. Video is going to send a clean kind of HDMI output, but I'll talk through what I'm doing right now. So, you know, it, it's trying to get a focus here. Let's, let's open it up. Let's do the same exercise we were just doing. I'm going to switch modes around a little bit. I think it's in auto area, auto focus. And I want to, I want to control focus just like I was. I'm going to run through my settings really here and put it in the uh, single point auto focus. And yeah, that ought to be fine. All right. So I'm going to tap up here to set my focus point, focus on it. We're at 1.4 ISO. So I'm in video mode here. You know, you're not seeing everything I'm doing. I've got a live histogram displaying on my camera back. I can sort of see what the exposure looks like. And as I stop down, I'm at F2, F2.8, F4, F5.6, F8, F11. They know filmmakers need to see what their image looks like at the aperture that they're shooting. And so they're letting filmmakers do that. And you can even zoom in and see, is that truly in focus? It is truly in focus. So the filmmaker doesn't have that limitation at all in video mode. And one of the great things about these Z cameras is they remember all the settings that you were using last in video mode versus still mode. So if you were in manual mode and still mode and you go down to 30 second exposure for the Milky Way and then you flip over to video mode and you're in a bright situation shooting at a thousandth of a second in manual mode, when you flip back to still mode, it remembers you're at 30 seconds. When you flip back to video mode, it remembers you were at a thousandth of a second. So it, it, it isn't something that you can just flip back and forth in order to use the video mode to do this. It, they're independent circuits, essentially. But it just goes to show that there's no reason on earth they couldn't let us do this in stills mode. So, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me that, that do get what I'm talking about here. Why? Why is this limitation there? And I think that the answer is they want lots of light coming into the lens to help with autofocus, to make the autofocus fast and accurate. Fair enough. When you flip into manual focus mode to finally craft that landscape image, that macro image, or the still life image, you know, somebody who's crafting an image and wants to check in detail at 100% whether or not at final aperture they've got their focus front to back, they should let us do that. There should be, maybe it's a mode that you can switch. Maybe when you flip into manual focus mode, all of a sudden it stops that limitation and behaves like the D850 where if, or any of the, the old DSLRs, where if you hit the depth of field preview button, it gives you a wide open, clean view. It's a switch back and forth. Um, there should at least be a setting to enable that for those who want it in the settings. And I just would in, I would entreat Nike or Nike. I would entreat Nikon to consider doing a firmware update to let the old cameras do that. And certainly to let any new cameras that are released do that. Um, you know, I know a lot of you have talked to, to different Nikon groups. I've talked to MPS. They've talked to the engineers. I know that Nikon Germany has talked. So, you know, 
feel free to reach out to Nikon with this concern. Uh, I, I just really hope they'll change that because it will make our lives easier. What I do right now when I want to when I want to focus and I want to make sure that I've got it exactly like I want. Let's flip back into stills mode. You know, I'm here at f11. I, I have depth of field preview mapped. You know, and I just kind of play around with it and I, I work to get everything looking as balanced as I can in the full view. It's about the best I can do. I tend to focus about a third of the way in the scene like I did with film. You know, then I'll, I'll, I'll work it, you know, let's say I go to F16. I'm just kind of looking at it. You know, it looks pretty sharp. Nikon to water bottle, I'll take my shot. Well, this is a really, really this is ridiculous. I gotta turn the ISO up. Sorry guys, I'm gonna turn it back on. Sorry for that absence there for a second. We got to ramp our ISO up. Let's go to say 1600, and then we'll uh, we're going to go into the I menu really quick and turn on exposure delay mode um, because it's off right now. Let's give it a second exposure delay so I don't shake it hitting the button, and then I'm going to go ahead capture that image, hit playback. And then I can zoom in to just check. And that's what I wind up doing. I wind up fine tuning using my focusing adjustments on the lens and tweaking it back and tweaking it forward a little bit. It's kind of like in the old school days before I had the live view. You know, if you know what you're doing, you can still hone it in and use it. And I find so many things about this camera easier to use and much more enjoyable that, you know, I don't look back. I don't grab the D850 just because it can do that but I would really like it if Nikon would address that. So, you know, reach out to Nikon, tell them to make a great product better, um, and hopefully, again, they, they don't continue with this limitation into future bodies. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll really strongly consider signing up uh, for my office hours, June 22nd. Submit those long exposure images. We're gonna go through them, talk about them, talk about long exposures, take your questions, submit those questions, hudsonherring.com slash office hours. If you guys have any gear needs, hit me up with questions anytime I'm easy to reach. Uh, you can hit me up in the questions on YouTube, you can email me, and I've always got links to all the gear I use at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope everyone is staying safe, feeling a little bit more freedom this summer for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, just uh, breathing a little bit easier. Stay safe, be creative. We'll see you next week.